Hello everyone. Thanks for joining the session today. We will, sh will start shortly with this event. Just a few moments, please. Hello, Professor Günther. Hello, Christina. As the director of Union Flores, I'm delighted to welcome you all to this first event in this very special series, I have to say, the International Water Colloquium. Before we begin, I would like to take the opportunity to express my appreciation to all the people and there were many who have worked so diligently to bring this event together, both in research, you saw the list at the beginning um, of this session and behind the scenes. And to you, our valued participants for joining us on this journey. As a think tank and as a postgraduate teaching organization within the UN system, Unio Flores advances the resource nexus and uh, we focus specifically on water, soil, waste, energy and other geo resources that are of concern to the United Nations and its member states. And particularly we look uh, in developing and emerging economies. I greatly anticipate this International Water Colloquium as it encourages collaboration and knowledge transfer to address a significant pillar of the resource nexus, indeed the most important resource on our planet, water. Access to water and sanitation was declared a human right by the United Nations in 2010 and is the sixth sustainable development goal. I have no doubt that this colloquium, this whole series, uh, will facilitate meaningful dialogue and research opportunities for the promotion and protection of this vital resource. The strategic partnerships of Union Flores and Tew Dresden and UNEHS and University of Bonn are prime examples of the importance of educational collaborations for the fostering of advanced training, capacity development, and knowledge dissemination. Very often we focus only on research. I think education is very important. The virtual format of this series, while originating as a response to the challenges imposed by the current pandemic, allows for simultaneous engagement and inclusivity, one of the major goals also of the United Nations, across a wide range of audiences, as you could see from the list. I hope you enjoy this event and I look forward to seeing the progression of this collaboration. And now I'm very pleased to introduce the Rector of the University of Bonn, Professor Hof, to take the floor. The floor is yours. Thank you for joining and enjoy. So thank you very much. Am I up already on the floor, Christina? Okay, so I, I'm going. So my name is Michael Hoch. Uh, I'm the rector of the University of Bonn. And let me first start by thanking the organizers uh, of this colloquium, in particular also the colleagues from UNU Flores, uh, who, who have been basically at the center of the organizing team. Thank you very much um, 
for giving us the opportunity also to show uh, what, what type of interesting topic this is, but at the same time, how nicely we interact. So then, of course, the, we are in a crisis. So the situation for us, for all the universities, so this applies for the University of Bonn, for the University of Dresden, and for many others is very challenging. And in fact, I'm working day and night to, to think about regulations, how to handle the pandemic for the students and also for my colleagues. But it's very good that also in these times where, where we realize that international cooperation is very important. And maybe in particular, in maybe the biggest uh, crisis of our health systems, the biggest crisis of economies with many dead people also that we have to worry, worry about, that in this situation, we need more international co cooperation and not less. And the fact that we're coming together here uh, scientifically is this makes me happy that that you know we we basically we are on the right track uh, and in particular also for this topic hydrology water so i'm a biologist from training i know that water is at the core of life and therefore this is very important to think about water resource management uh, and of course ecological questions associated to it and um, um, you know, how, how this can, can serve basically um, uh, humans and, and their um, environment and development. So water research, resource management is very important for us. So at the University of Bonn, we have quite some tradition in this topic. So there's many people working on it from, from a geological or geographical side, uh, but also from the side of biology, uh, as I was mentioning. So we have a, a Bonn water lecture, which is which we have since many years, like 15 years, I think. And we have a new colleague who, who obtained an UNESCO chair. Uh, this basically with a topic of human water systems in the Department of Geography at our university. This is Professor Evers, who plans to set up a Bonn water network even, an international network uh, about this topic. So we are well prepared at the University of Bonn. And of course, what is, what is very good for us that we are in the, if you want, in the capital of, of the United Nations institutions in Germany, namely in Bonn, we have, I, th I think in the meantime now, 24 or so secretariats uh, of uh, uh, the United Nations on topics such as biodiversity, um, uh, um, sustainable futures and so on. And uh, I think the topic, the water topic is, is very well placed in the city of Bonn. So thank you, uh, you know, for, for also being able to participate. And uh, I hope you, you, you will have a very interesting uh, insights in, the, in this colloquium. Thank you. Thanks to you, Professor Hoch, and also thanks to you, Professor Günther, for this really warm welcome. I'm Christina, and together with Farid, we will be, we will be the moderators of the session of this event series and guides you through you all the lectures. So just a bit of housekeeping at the, for the moment. So for people who are joining us uh, from Zoom, uh, please use the chat function for any technicalities or technical issues and the question answer session or uh, icon uh, for the uh, content related things. And we will address your questions in the end of this event today. And people who are joining uh, from Facebook, uh, please use the comment section for any questions and we will try to address these as well in the end. And now I give the floor to Serena and Rochke or George, uh, who are today the researchers talking about uh, giving their insights about the cooperation of the uh, project. And Serena is the Associate Program uh, Officer at Union Flores, and George is a researcher and professor from San Carlos University in Guatemala. The floor is yours. Hello, can everyone see me? Okay, I will start sharing my screen for the presentation. that working? So 
welcome everyone and it's an honor for me to be here and also at the, especially at the opening of this colloquium series. Uh, my name is Serena Caucci, as uh, Christina kindly introduced me. I'm working at the UNU Flores for about five years and I'm an associate uh, program officer here on the Resource Nexus. Um, today, I would like to bring you to the journey of one of our projects, so-called uh, Sludge Tech, uh, which has involved multiple partners from the South America and the Central America. And I'm really happy to have next to me my colleague and now becoming a friend, Jorge Cifuentes, which has been uh, one also of the initiator of this project together with us. So let me explain why we would like to, we wanted to start this uh, research or this project in cooperation with uh, Guatemala and Mexico on sustainable management of wastewater and sludge in decentralized areas of the Americas. So, well, one of the main regions, reasons is that 80% of the wastewater generally worldwide is discharging to the environment without receiving any or poor treatments. And also because Latin America has a high concentration of population in urban areas, and also this affects strongly uh, the availability for uh, water uh, treatments. At the same time, the existing infrastructure in the area are not that high in terms of presence, only about 40%, but only 20% of them are effectively working. So. Uh, this was our initial motivation to start working with uh, the uh, partners. So uh, as a general info, uh, we have uh, the general, we, our project was financed by the BMBF and from the, from the CONACYT from Guatemala point of view and an additional contribution then from the FIAVI, the Fideicomiso of um, Mexico. Um, so the main objective of this um, proposal was to facilitate, therefore, a co-design process between international expert and local actor to agree on potential sustainable solution in wastewater treatments. Based Serena? on that, Serena? yeah, we can't see your yes. slides. Sorry. Can you see my slides? No, we can't. Sorry for interrupting. Oh. Okay, no, very good that you said that. Now? Not yet. Can you? No, not yet. Okay. Because I'm actually seeing it all. Um, what do you see? Do you see me or? You just see yourself, yeah. Okay. Let me stop then and uh, sharing and I will start sharing again if you don't mind. Now we can see the screen. Oh, now, hopefully, you will see also the presentation. Do you? I can see myself. Now we can see the. All right. Okay. Very good. So, apologies. I hope that you will be back to me on the problematic here why we started on. Uh, on this, uh, to work on this project and the necessity actually to address also cooperate, international cooperation on this issue. Here I was on the basic financing of the uh, project and here I would like to give you also a look at the structure of the partners which were involved in this project because if I'm here talking about Sludge Tech project, I want to acknowledge all the work that the partners have been doing with us and also the previous colleagues and actual colleagues at Flores, which uh, have been uh, hardly working on the, on the project. So we have two international uh, project partners, which was the USAC of Guatemala, uh, the University of San Carlo, and the FIAVI, which is the Fideicomiso of uh, Mexico. On, uh, from the German partners, we had beside UNU Flores, where Tamara Avellan and myself, we were co-leading the uh, proposal, uh, Angela Hahn and uh, Sa uh, Sabrina Kieske, Lucia Benavides, our ex-head of the program, uh, Iroshad Etiarachi, 
Um, let me name it all, Andrea Müller and other interns. On the TUD side at that time, uh, our now director, Edeltrau Günther, uh, which is, uh, was uh, involved in this project from the TUD side together with Anne Karin Uske and uh, Christina Dornack. From the DWA, which is the German uh, of Water and Wastewater Association, we had a couple of group leader working in there with this, namely the head is Roland Knitschke. Um, why I'm saying that is that our partner being so necessary and worth it that I want to give them uh, the acknowledgement for this project. So um, despite our work uh, and our project was dealing with two different case studies, I would like to focus here only in one due to the reduction of, I mean, the limited time given. And I will uh, show you the case study that we have been selecting for Guatemala. Uh, for Guatemala, we have been choosing the area of Panajachel, which is a, a city in at the, at the Atitlan Lake, which is one of the UNESCO patrimony and for its beauty. And due to the um, uh, touristic activities and uh, economic development in there, uh, the pollution of the lake has been increasing for the uncontrolled release of wastewater into the area. In place, there is a, a municipal wastewater treatment plant, but it's not uh, sufficient, so actually is uh, below the required uh, volume capacity, and it's uh, as and it's uh, having a problem with uh, the maintenance of the system. Um, why we wanted to look for sustainable option for water management, of course, is that not only that simple, and we want to also understand in this context risk and benefits that a treatment plant could bring into our community. And this requires multiple dimension of sustainability, which is not only the technical one. So within this project, we work toward understanding of the understanding of the current context, which would have facilitated us also the interaction and at the same time work together with the local stakeholder to develop and uh, select sustainable solution option to solve the problem in Panajachel. So we work on uh, few simple assumptions by which were worth it for us to move on the project. And one of that is that reducing pollu pollution loads in, uh, from the effluents would reduce, of course, environmental degradation. The recovery and reuse of resources which have, were provided that from the so-called waste could support further sustainable management alternatives. And at the same time, a transdisciplinary work would increase the delivery of and success of these implementation processes. And of course, inter and transdisciplinary vision are necessary to determine the nexus problem and to work toward a nexus oriented solution. With this work, we started then to uh, apply our nexus approach, which is based on determining the nexus problem, defining the scope of work, identifying solution option, and the cycle, cycle would continue via implementation of select nexus option, evaluating then the impact, and then to go iterative uh, toward uh, the next cycle of investigation. Due to the limited time and resources, which was limited to 18 months, we work only until the, and identifying the nexus option through research. And uh, how did we work on? Of course, we did define the status quo of the situation in the area in Guatemala and Panajachel. And for doing that, we have been uh, performing sustainability assessment, wickedness analysis, and social network analysis that includes stakeholder analysis and power mapping. With that, we would have been able, or we were able to identify uh, bottlenecks and try to overcome them. And of course, to reiterate the inter-transdisciplinary approach to fine tune whether we were um, leaving behind uh, status quo or items which were not considered in the first round of iteration. 
Um, here, I would just uh, go quickly through, but this is, was how the project was divided in work packages and it reflects our methodology. And as you can see here, the sludge tech work was not only based on desk work, was mainly working in cooperation with the partner locally. And we perform all of a series of activities that move from assessment workshop, field works, data collection, uh, technical workshop, and of course, um, series of interaction and meetings with the main stakeholders in place. Everything started in 2017 from another project, uh, which was named Suva, Safe Use of Wastewater in Agriculture in workshop uh, in uh, Tepehi, so in the Mesquita Valley, where we wanted at the beginning, also together with the partner in Guatemala, to define and assess uh, var variable and indicators, and if possible, to define limit sets that would have um, that de define the environmental technical sustainability of our systems. Of course, there were a ser series of roundtable discussion and drawing exercise between uh, the uh, actual reality of the systems and the wish expectation or the wish on where the system should have been going through for uh, the partners or from the stakeholders point of view. And this was also helping us to define which were the underlining bottlenecks of the um, implementation phase. Same was the applied for the Panahashel workshop where the activity there were involving uh, a, a broad range of uh, academics, but also federal officials, NGOs, munis munis municipality, private enterprises, and local community. There, we wanted to also define which were the barrier and um, bottlenecks that would have hamper communication within uh, the, pa the partners. Uh, additional work, as I said, was on a technical point of view, where we gather together with the DWA and we provide capacity development for the uh, plant uh, ma maintainer, so for the plant operator, to uh, better improve the performances of their own um, wastewater treatment plants. Both, um, it, this was run in Mexico. A um, major uh, part also of our work was for uh, the academics to work in the field work, both in Guatemala and Mexico. And this wouldn't have been possible without uh, the, the support of the partners, because what we find out is that uh, most of the data were not available, neither in literature nor in uh, uh, official technical offices, but they had to be gathered both uh, from Guatemala and Mexico. Um, once we uh, gather technical and economic and social data, we wanted to see how those uh, information would have lead then to activities and output. But for uh, producing an outcome and an impact, we should have um, analyze which was the context in which we were working on. And for that, we went through the so-called wickedness analysis, which is um, composing three main pillars that an analysis that would uh, analyze, of course, a uh, complex problem and would divide the complexity, the, the, um, the pillars into conflicts, complexity and uncertainty of the system. The, at the same time, um, for uh, doing such a type of exercise, both roundtables and um, interviews were necessary. And of course, we would have reported afterwards to the partners and to have focus roundtables then where we would have prioritized this type of um, uh, wickedness. Um, as you can see, the, the wicked, wickedness of the system was extremely high and there was a clear conflict of interest between stakeholders, but also complexity of the system, which was extremely dynamic 
and that the solution or potential uh, solution which were, have been tried in the past by the local partners in Guatemala were not possible as the dynamic of the changes, especially also in the social political landscape, were uh, higher rather than the speed of uh, defining solution. And the uncertainty, of course, as I said, was due to the changes of the social political landscape. Um, here, this was this kind of wickedness uh, was also reflected also to the possibility of accessing resources uh, and also to produce outputs. Therefore, we thought that uh, thorough analysis of the stakeholders and how the stakeholders were interconnected and related between uh, each other was necessary. If you're interested on the methodology which we have been doing, I will provide you some uh, link and information later on, but please let me move forward maybe more to the uh, outcomes. Uh, for the case of Guatemala, the, uh, the landscape of stakeholder was extremely diverse. And this has also reflected on the number of interaction and relationship which were uh, displayed between the stakeholders. Please let me uh, give you a small uh, description of this uh, image. So you would see that the stakeholders are named and labeled here in black, and the lines connecting the different stakeholders is the interaction and number of interaction that they are having between each other. The dot in green, I hope you can see it, define the amount of interaction when a certain uh, when um, decision or interaction between stakeholders were taking place. When we talk about of out degree, out degree we, we relate to relation that in reality stakeholders have between each other. And as you can see from the next picture where I would uh, highlight in this image the, the relationship between stakeholder according to what the stakeholder would think they have uh, between each other is completely different. And this clearly creates a conflict because obviously the stakeholder are not communicating with the right partners to address solution. The, thing, the landscape of a stakeholder changes also when we talk about who's taking the decision when there must be uh, an implementation or a solution to be uh, implemented. Uh, here, the landscape change of stakeholder changes again, and therefore we can really assume that uh, not only who is affecting or affected by a decision is not uh, in communication between each other, but also who's taking the decision is often not in uh, direct correlation with affected and affecting people or stakeholder, apologies. I quickly go through the, the um, sustainability data set that we have um, collected. This is just to say that the stakeholder analysis also help us on defining uh, social, technical, and environmental data. And we have built also in a co-participatory approach um, this data set, which has then allowed us to define the status of sustainability of the system. The database has uh, included more than 3,000 data items, and they were also the sustainability was uh, defined according uh, apologies mm, according to here we go uh, a distance to target evaluation so as you can see here from the table below um, you will see that all the uh, the social technical economic and environmental um, the side of the um, dimension, sorry, of sustainability, were evaluated as a distance to target. And what is highlighted here in yellow on the right side of this table clearly highlights that the, um, the dimension of sustainability were rather low in terms of uh, non-sustainable. And when we talk about red, that this was related to the uh, economic factor, the system, in this case, the wastewater and treatment plant in Guatemala was extremely unsustainable. 
The variable in green mainly related to uh, environmental sampling, and this was uh, redefined as uh, okay and sustainable because it followed the um, monitoring guidelines of the Guatemala. Um, so when um, we move now to, okay, what we learned from this uh, exercise of defining and talking with people, we defined, we understood of a serious, series of potential implementation that could be uh, uh, recognized as uh, accepted by the society, but also uh, in need of being implemented. And um, despite that there is a high uh, unsustainable wastewater treatment system and a fragmented sta stakeholder landscape, we could conclude that there are uh, improvements that could move uh, the system toward a sustainable one. And this is related, of course, to the technical part, which is related to the performance of the wastewater treatment plant, but also in retrieving data collection and possibility of storing uh, in a technical office such information and, of course, provide data exchange among stakeholders. This was one of our major bottleneck when we had to then assess our su sustainability. Of course, there is a need of strengthening uh, social networks and at the same time to improve the management and governance strategies. But those have a different timelines and I would say it requires um, a relatively large amount of time. Um, here you can see that there are some detailed information on how we could have uh, improved or we would suggest how to improve the system. And I just named a few of them, like, for example, to have a continuous source of electricity and supply, which was found, for example, for the efficiency of the wastewater treatment plant uh, problem. And of course, uh, alternative energy supply would have been also uh, a more sustainable one. Of course, increasing circularity of uh, byproducts of the wastewater treatment, for example, reusing the sludge, or uh, making use of water effluents and also, why not, of biogas, that would be a solution to follow. Um, from the data collection, I don't need to uh, repeat myself, but definitely a better documentation of the data which were collected in the different offices would have been extremely of value when uh, we would like to uh, speed up with the imp implementation process of a sustainable solution. Of course, the strengthening of the no uh, social networks had also for our project an extremely uh, relevant value because Guatemala is uh, highly based on participatory approach where communities have a um, strong say in it. And so the government should uh, seek on strengthening also this uh, relationship with uh, the communities. Um, last but not least, of course, improving management and governance strategies. And of course, a prior, uh, prioritization of uh, action should be uh, clear to the government and also to the local authority. And this would have been also uh, beneficial for being flexible in the decision making process as the social political landscape uh, changes. Uh, quite frequently in Guatemala. Um, of course, uh, the mapping, the exercise that we have been doing within the, uh, the frame of the sludge tech project would have been also beneficial for the government office and running a power mapping a relation between stakeholders would have also helped on understanding dynamics and uh, barrier to implementation. Um, as I said, there is a lot of material out of it. There is more to say in terms of content of Sludge Tech project, but today we are here to dialogue and to understand what is the benefit of a cooperation. Here I could show you what cooperation can lead 
on uh, um, from the content uh, point of view, but there is much more behind. And I'm really looking forward to explore this together with my colleague, Holger. Uh, with that, I would like to thank you all the <laughs> plethora of uh, colleagues which have been contributing to this project, the one that are still contributing and uh, Nevertheless, even if I couldn't list all of them, all the stakeholders of the two countries, Mexico and Guatemala, for their extreme support and motivation to work with us. With that, I would like to thank you all for your attention and I'm looking forward to the question later on. Christina. Yeah, thank you very much for your insights. So it would be great if we can start now the dialogue between both of you. Okay, just um, first of all, I would like then to bring to the floor my colleague Jorge. Jorge, if you want, you can uh, introduce yourself. And as a first question, I would like to ask you, uh, what has changed and what has been happening afterwards, after then the Sludge Tech, Tech project has ended? Thank you. I, I am Jorge, Jorge Cifuentes from University of San Carlos of Guatemala. I'm principal researcher at the Faculty of Engineering. Um, I'm glad to be here. Really, thank you to Juno Flores, TUD, Bon, and thank you, Serena, to share the part of the project that we have, the two years project in, in Guatemala and Mexico. And about your questions, many things are improving uh, during the project, during the process, even with the more the difficult things between the stakeholders, the relation you saw in the workshop that we have three workshops in Atitlán, in Panajachel. We visit the uh, Los Cebollales is the wastewater treatment plant, but now uh, it's improving in something. The, the is uh, AMSCLAI is the authority in the Ley Atitlan because it's a basic, a special basing uh, rules and regulation different, including the wastewater treatment to the other place of the country. So AMSCLAI is the authority. Now they made some improvements. Uh, the the experience, uh, Julio Pablo, the wastewater treatment operator that we know is working there. He sent me every week some information, what is the, the things of the situation in, in this wastewater treatment plant. And they, they are planning to, to put this solar, solar energy with the photovoltaic. One, one of the issues in this kind of technology is the energy. They use too much energy. Uh, this kind of uh, wastewater treatment plant. And uh, now they, they will put uh, some solar cells. They made some change and some kind of the uh, technical improvements of the, in the inflow and of the wastewater treatment and the, the flow out to the lake, to the, to the river that is beside to the lake. So I think uh, many positive things during the project during the process, even with difficulties. And now I think we are positive that they, they have, well, they will be more, more results and more positive is not only for this uh, sludge tech projects, if no other things, other projects from other institutions are in the, in the lake, many, many, not only the national government, the private companies, the local community, the Mayan community, there are many people very interesting to, to find a solution, to not, to not have some, some years in 10, 20 years, uh, destroy the lake because it's very important for the Maya community. About 300,000 people live there and about 1 million visitors every year. So it's a kind of a special place, you know? Yeah. Okay. And 100,000 people still take water for to drink water from the lake. Yeah, and what we have noticed there is also this uh, 
like hidden conflict, I call it. But it's uh, that, of course, there is a Maya community which is is living out of tourism, but the tourism per se, not as in a negative accent, but it's creating, of course, what is so-called the pollution, which is then uh, impacting the lake. And this is, I think, it's very good that awareness uh, reach out to the right place, to the people that could take a uh, decision. And I'm really happy also to hear, and this is something that also was uh, one of our celebration, that despite the government, local government has changed, our the operator of the wastewater treatment plant could remain in place. Is that true? I mean, usually there is quite a lot of dynamics in changing also in the technical office, or? Yeah, yeah many things inside. It's not just technical things. There are many things you have to, to be consensus with the different communities, different stakeholders around the lake. There are many hotels, the, the fishermen, the, the transport, for Baiboa to the tourists and the people, the, the farmers. So there are many stakeholders inside to the to the lake, but one of the, the things positive, it was the workshops, that we have three workshops in this project in Panajachels, and all of them were discussions, but they even they didn't know to each other at that time, some of them. Now they know, they, they have, they, there is some conflicts and some different points of view but all the people are interested in finding solution and not destroy the lake. This is the, I think, the positive things that we, one of the things that we have results in this as large tech project. Yeah, and I also think what was uh, another, uh, I call it achievement, but I think it's the community that has been working toward. It's not our achievement, but rather their achievement, is that that they consider us at the end not being another person that will, or another institution that wants to do uh, research there, but not giving anything back, so rather as a taker, but really we spend an enormous time or amount of time together with you to build trust in the community so that our advices wouldn't have been taken in a negative way, but rather as a constructive way. And I think this uh, is the way how I consider cooperation being effect uh, effective. And at the same time, uh, it's something that we shouldn't forget. Building trust with our partners is one of the time consuming uh, part, but at the same time, the one that could give more uh, rewards outcome. Yeah, that's true. And the community, that is the most important. And, and save the lake. This is the normal. Yeah. <laughs> save Jorge, the lake. Uh, by the way, how was then as an academician then afterwards uh, Sludge Tech? So could you uh, use Sludge Tech as a platform for other projects? How has changed then your academic uh, work? If it has changed at all or what what's going on in there? So we have a, now water is very important for us. It's, it's one of the, the special point to research in my unit in the, that we have on the Faculty of Engineering, Engineering. And we have another three projects in water, two international water projects are in process like the, we call sea wetlands and the other the heat is that is kind of the wastewater treatment technology using naturals, natural resource and the other is uh, underground water resource. This is, this is do two things very specific, even in this area, in Mesoamerican regions. Uh, supposed to be, we have a lot of water. Now it's raining, you know, the hurricanes it's in, it's in Central America now, yeah. it's raining and colder here, in, but Honduras and Nicaragua, and the Caribbean part is worse. But even if we have this rain, there is a lot of pollution and some population, big cities, they don't have water. They don't have drinking water access. So water is the SDG number six. And this is the most important of all of the SG for us. So we have these two international projects also uh, with German institution, with the South American and Central American institution, many of them, at least 10 different institutions. So the this is the other positive things that we have we get with the slush tech the network the network the research 
uh, Juno Flores, TUD. Uh, now we have with uh, Leibniz also, Peru, Uruguay, Mexico, Cuba, and, and Guatemala. So, so this is uh, very important to, to have this kind of network. And we have another two projects in water resource, water management internationals. Uh, and I'm really happy also to that our Union Flores also applied other times uh, for a project with you and we have been also successful. And I am really happy that this network is growing because it's also building kind of a memory of what we have been doing. And it's I, we hope that in maybe in the medium term, we might have some result or impact that would uh, give like a better solution, though challenging. Question, Jorge, now again, uh, what, um, talking about this, you know, water and water management is uh, important. So what makes a good cooperation in water management at the international level? So what is a good cooperation for you in your understanding? There are some, so, something that is not like maybe a research in the lab, in laboratories in the, in the campus that go to the field especially in that places like Legati plant, they have had some different, different uh, problems, not only water, so they have a uh, transport, uh, food, the other thing, poverty, and something. So kind of major research in combination with international institutions is good because they have experience in other countries. It's not the same, we cannot import even from Mexico solution there, in Tepeji, for example, that taking at the plant. It's not the same, but in some things, this experience is uh, is important to how to manage the projects, how to go to the communities and try to handle the, the situation. It's because it's not just state samples and made, it's not this kind of research. It's more social work, a lot of social work, uh, work with women, work with the local the schools we visit also the school with children with teachers so talk, talking about water what is the importance of the water and that is a it's kind of the experience that is important to have in this region in central america in guatemala but also can globally doing and can be export to other places like maybe Africa, South America, or Caribbean countries. So that is a, one of the good points to have these yeah. projects. And I also think that it's not only in one direction, I think as a union florist, but uh, that is in the, uh, now, let's say in Germany, uh, we have learned also strength and a potential uh, way out to see a solution that probably in the more um, developed countries, if you want to say, they might not be uh, understood. So I think that there is this mutual exchange also of understanding process and identifying solution that has been worth it also for uh, Flores. So it's not only you have learned and gained something, but I think uh, also we have done the same. Now, when you talk about, you have said, okay, it's about, uh, you know, talking with people is to communicating with stakeholders and you name at least six or seven in your, uh, in your talk now, in your speech. So what is, you know, when we all agree that we say, okay, uh, co-participatory approach is relevant, it's necessary for implementing sustainable solution in water management, but then when we come onto making an action on it, it's so hard. What makes this fact of uh, interacting with different stakeholders and engaging with different stakeholders makes it so difficult? What's uh, the trick and maybe what's the solution? <laughs> If you have, yeah, that is even in if it's one country, it's not the same the kind of the the, the problems that you go to legacy plan area or go to the east or north part. The how to handle how to get together the stakeholders and trying to find one 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 solution. This is no no no. It's it's, it's hard. It's it's difficult that you say, but. 
there are even still now there is two or three i cannot say teams but three 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 kind of uh of proposal of solution to the wastewater treatment not only the wastewater treatment in lake atitlan and still these three three point on the view are no have no find the consensus so do you uh, think that you think it might be also a conflict of interest in this playing a role, being a different stakeholders, that is. that could uh, slow down the, of course, of course. the process. Even one of the solutions, I think there is a lot of conflict of interest. So can be no just the, the interest of the community, the interest of the layout plan, or the interest of the Guatemala, or the, because layout plan is not only for Guatemala, it's, it's really for, for for it's a richness for the for the for the world. And there are conflict of interest, and they don't see how, how affect this. No, no, try to to make the consensus and wait to wait every year more. Uh, they don't see, but they don't have maybe bad uh, bad interests or bad actions. But if we continue in this way. We, we we can go find soon the solution and and it's not easy. It's no easy solution, but more years is more difficult. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, well cool. maybe what I can say also from the project per se, because you are talking already at the bigger uh boundaries, a bit the biggest larger scale. That was also for us one of also the difficulties where uh, even in communication of information, uh, there was a break, let's say a limit on the, how the information would flow from one stakeholder to another one, just because of conflict of interest. And actually the work that we have built up with you also with the community was try to overcome such a barrier of prejudice and first understanding and listening to options and see whether then they could come together or one could uh, be taken. And I think conflict of interest, that doesn't mean it's only economic, but also interest for different communities or realities. It's a uh, uh, part that I think cooperation project should tackle more, maybe by providing example on how uh, similar um, situation have been uh, overcome in maybe places where the governance is similar, uh, for example, to Guatemala, but also giving other examples. So what could be a solution then? Yeah, that is the, it's very important because it's not just technical solution that we can have a good uh, wastewater treatment system. It's not just this one, it's more the community, uh, the trying to find a consensus to all the stakeholders, the government, the central government, the political issue, the local governments, the municipalities, AMSCLA, of course, and the universities. There is another two, three universities working in that in the lake. Um, but I'm no negative to that because all of these three options that they are on the table, they are they have the main interest is to save the lake. So what is the one point is its consensus. In the three, there are three options on the table, but these three options is not just to, is to find a solution to save the lake. So one is the one, I think is, this is a one point because there is the three options are trying to find the solutions. And yeah. That, that, and is, the, that is, the, this is good. I think so, the, we, we, we start for this, and this is political also. The most yeah, uh, important thing of that is uh, political decisions from the central yeah. government, from the, and they can go to handle because there are different institutions working that in the lake. There is CONAP, INAP, and SCLAI, MAR, and all the environmental are working. Even the health minister is working in the lake. So this is the, who, who can find the best solution, no, we try to, to make a decision is, is the government. Thank you. Maybe um, my, one of my last question is that 
maybe the problem of data availability, because this has been, as I said in my presentation, has been one of the uh, other problems that has hampered then the speed also of assessment of the status quo in uh, Guatemala, right? So often uh, data were not uh, available and we had to work backward on retrieving either in field or through specific interviews or through uh, the academia uh, data that would qualify us for doing, for example, sustainability assessment. So how do you think uh, what would be a solution for, uh, I mean, it's not only for Atitlan, but in general, how could we overcome the problem of uh, data gap and which could be a solution that could be placed in place uh, for collecting data or to have a reliable source of data information? Who has to have all of this data and information that has to collect? I think it has to be unscribed. Because it's the authority within Atlanta, Atlanta, but they have and they do every year some uh, even uh, some uh, kind of taking samples every month. But even in that, there are or there is no enough information, especially in social, uh, the community, where is no no. I'm not I'm not talking about just the results of the wastewater treatment analysis. Or the water analysis, but in community, in political, in in the interest or a stakeholder interest, that is the still is the lack of the information. Uh, collect all of this information and trying to get a consensus is one of the things that to find in better way and in less time to to go to 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 find a way to, what, what we have to do. Now. Yeah, okay. yeah. Maybe it's also one of uh, our opinion, and uh, it's also that information were there, but they were not shared. So I think, despite Amsklai is the official in charge, there is often also overlapping in roles on uh, uh, responsibilities, and uh, this creates also partially a conflict and non. Uh, transparency on sharing information, despite maybe the different stakeholders might be in uh, uh, owning uh, the, those information. So maybe what we have done with uh, also our project was bringing them on the table and making realize that basically we had data. So we had you know, probably repetition of data that could have been avoided in, also in terms of efforts if we would have just come uh, on the same table. And I think this is the part that now AMSCLA is trying to take it over to create a more um, participation also on data collection. Is correct? Yeah, they have, even as a public information, because it's AMSCLA is a public institution, and if they have some data, this is a public information we can get and they they were very open when we visit even but still they uh, even that what they have in other things so parameters is not enough i think uh, there is uh, perhaps have another institutions of the late another two or three okay yes they have but it's not collect we create complexity <laughs> yeah that is the, this is that that you say even even when when people is what is weakened this is this they, they are asking yeah that. and is, I, why you put weakened that this is no no the the war but maybe you you later you can you can explain why what why why we put this this war in that that yes. yeah but this is it's not that they are maybe it's not that they are yellows with the documents or the information that they have no 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 that they i'd rather no, think I rather think that there is, they are the official responsible for it, but there are also other institutions which do collect anyway information. And I think gathering data in a transparent manner in one unique place, maybe that could help also uh, sure. assessments and also cooperation. That was, I sure. think, the part that we were trying to, despite we do all agree that it's uh, difficult. Uh, maybe uh, I am done with questions but i have one comment maybe that i would like to do that uh the 
let's say we can call it beauty or not, despite the 18 months were not sufficient uh, for creating a strong impact on the so on the implementation of solution i think the echoing of the project has been also raising awareness at the larger ecosystem because we were working just at the level of the wastewater treatment plant and now we are talking about lake artitlan we are talking about water resources and i think that this is also the part of what we call nexus is how we do um, connect um, different scales and boundaries of information, and we try to draw from them synergies and maybe also identifying trade-offs, but at the same time, synergies can be created. And I really hope that maybe in the future, other projects might rise and we could expand then uh, the project and move it forward. And in the meanwhile, I really want to... Uh, Thank you for what you are continuing doing there also as a pra practitioner and uh, academician. Uh, so I really uh, appreciate. I think Thank from you, my Joanna. side, I, I'm done with my question. And I think maybe there will be more coming from our audience, I'm sure. So maybe I would give the floor back to uh, Christina. Okay. Thank, Thank you very uh, much to you both. It was very interesting just to listen to the dialogue. Yes, we have some more questions here. And Serena, please stay uh, online with the video because I think they're addressed to you both. So there is the first question about um, how frequently are you now uh, in contact uh, with the stakeholders still from this project or is there any contact yet to check their progress on that? But George, feel free to reply as well if you want. Oh, I was muted. Sorry. I just want to say I give the floor to Jorge because he's our also guest and he's maybe more than informed. Jorge, are you there? You're Have you disappeared? Unmute. Okay. Ah, sorry. Please, can you repeat the question? Because I ha I have checked into the, the, the last one. Could you please uh, repeat the question so I can? Yes, so it was uh, um, asked uh, the, in the beginning. So um, how often you are still in contact with the stakeholders, if you are still in contact with them, and to check their progress on the project? Yeah, we, we still have a, a lot of communication with, uh, with the layers, the clan stakeholders. Even we have another water, not in at Leyatitlan, but in different regions of the country in water research. So still we have a communication every week with the wet waste water treatment plant operator in Panagachel. But there are 13 uh, towns uh, uh, with the different wastewater treatment. We don't have communication with all of them. But with two or three of them, yeah, we have continuous. We are also are part of kind of the university networks and research in water. So one of the, some of the stakeholders that they are in the slush tech, they go to these, uh, to these uh, meetings and the kind of networks. So we, we still have communication with some of the stakeholders, not at the political level, but more at the research and academic level. So maybe from my side, I can say, okay, Jorge is on our stakeholders, and I think we have it uh, regularly um, contact, and we pursue, let's say, what in what we believe. So we continue working toward uh, sustainable water management together. We we try to apply for funds to continue bringing also knowledge into the area. Talking about practitioner, we are in touch uh, not only with Amsklai, which uh, I was uh, delighted to, to have two of the colleagues. I mean, the, the other PI of the projects was also uh, flying back uh, to Guatemala, uh, also when the project was ending, to uh, report on the major findings and uh, to provide recommendation also in presence of the technical office. 
Uh, we are in touch still with some of the hoteleros, so it means the people which are uh, having hotels there and which are planning also either or have already in uh, wastewater treatment plant and keep in touch on the situation of the lake. And also with some other stakeholders, we are even thinking, I mean, we were extremely interest also on the development of the political decisions. So we are definitely, if not scientifically, uh, engaging with them to monitor the situation. And we hope that in a later future, some of our effort will also lead us back again uh, to be present in the area, if not virtually, if not in presence due to the COVID, but also virtually because I think we found a reliable partner in the area, uh, including uh, the San Carlo Guatemala University. So it, there is a good uh, exchange of uh, knowledge and information. Yeah, so just I will take some of the questions. Maybe we 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 will answer by by email or something. If we can no, no do now, so yeah. they do. We can take the notes of the of this question yes. and later we can answer by all that. Thank of you. That would be our recommendation. I just have a few minutes for a few more. And I also saw that Tamara, who was part of the project, tried to reply to some of the questions already in the chat, which is great. Thank you. But Thanks, she also Tamara. Has a question to Roque. Uh, what would you say was the biggest impact uh, for? Uh, the wastewater treatment plant at the lake Atitlan from the Sludge Tech project. But now, the, as I told you, I have a communication with the operator of the wastewater treatment plant. Uh, they, at least some guys, make it some improvements and technical. Uh, they are planning to, to put a solar energy in perhaps next year. You know, this year about the for the for the problems that we have around the world, uh, everything is in the standby. Some, of, many of the things are in the standby, but uh, but the, some of the, the solution of the slow tech proposal or results and the other projects that are involved in the Atlantic plan, they are the, they will apply. Some of them they will apply, and they are applying now some of these technical solutions. Okay, because yeah, her second part was, yeah, uh, what specific changes did you see and which way are the recommendations from the project being implemented? Communication is one of the most important things, the communication. Um, even the, there is a good thing, so no, not really a good things, the communication and the information, the open information that we have this and this place because, you know, the Panajachel is one of the, of the tongue of the of the at the lake, there are more. Maybe it's the principal for the population, but it's one of the example that if we we made something, we can get together to find a workshops, a network, and trying to find a solution. I think the communication is the one the most important result of the slush tech and the network about technical inside the still are in process. Yeah, okay. And another one from uh, Muhammad. Uh, I like, I would, he would like to ask uh, to um, house the contribution to the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals. Yeah, I think it's a quite a big question, but maybe you find a, a short answer. <laughs> if it's water, okay. it's SDG, yeah. Maybe Serena want to answer? No, no, go, go, Jorge. Yeah, for, for me, if I, if I, because I, I, in water research, the SDG number six is the most important. In this part of the, in this region of the, it's almost the, maybe 30% of the population of the world still don't meet the wastewater and treatment, drinking water access, sanitation, there is no access. So the SDG number six is the most important. It includes everything include energy, include poverty, include development, include sustainability, include even circular economy. Everything is inside of the SDG number six. If we don't make the number six, we cannot make the other, the other SDG. 
this is my opinion and I, in different conference internationals, is the same. SDG is the most important. So one uh, slush tech is part of the SDG number six. Even now, Senacid and the University of San Carlos are research. It's mandatory to have something including in the, in the, uh, the SDGs has to be kind of improvements or including in the research project, uh, the SD, not only the number six, but the all the, the 17 SDG. But for me, the number six is the most important as Slosh Tech is part of the SDGs, SDG uh, kind of uh, applications. And maybe just a minor uh, note from me, as uh, Jorge has already uh, said a lot. I think that despite our focus was mainly related to the SDG 6, there are a lot of interconnections uh, to other SDGs. And it's not that SDG 6 is the most important one, it's that, that by touching in this case, in our project, the SDG 6, we found a lot of synergies for uh, you know, working toward achieving other SDGs as uh, Jorge mentioned. So reducing poverty, well-being, uh, sustainable develop uh, de development in cities, but also uh, as mentioned, the part of uh, sustainable production as we found in the area also possibility of reusing uh, sludge from there. And there was also a marketability for that that wouldn't move only for uh, compost, despite being the major uh, wanted or accepted uh, solution, but also for uh, briquettes and other possibilities. So with what I've seen uh, some questions and in between, in be, in meanwhile, I also thank my colleague Sabrina Kerske and also Tamara Overland, which are trying to answer some question also in the chat. Thank you for that. Uh, we are team, so works well. Um, also, the, um, the part uh, that I want to say is that water reuse in Guatemala is not allowed at the moment. So we are working toward like sensibilize also uh, the uh, public opinion on that, and maybe uh, that will be uh, accepted later on on a second stage. Correct, Jorge? Yes, all the thing that's the, the, the special area of Atitlan, they cannot export the sludge. Can no, even the, to the other tongues, they, they cannot bring from the lay Atitlan area and bring to other places in the country the sludge. The wastewater can be the same, even in one of the projects is, uh, is not that is to export, but by, by law, the lay Atitlan, the, the management of the water has a special rules special regulation different to the other places, other lakes. We have a lot of lakes, lakes. Uh, but Lake Atitlan is the second one in volume of water in Mesoamerican region, include Mexico. So Lake Atitlan is the deepest also, also late. It's more than 300 meters deep in some of the points. So that is uh, and, and also is protected area. Yeah. At the same time, this touristic place is protected area. And one of the visitors go just for the tourists, for, but some of them go to research and try to visit the environmental and the protected area and the cultural, the cultural, because it's uh, more than 70% of the population is Mayan. Yeah. So that is, is the point. And this, uh, this project, no, it's not really just a wastewater treatment project. <laughs> include many things. A slush tech include many things inside, even social uh, communication, uh, analytic analysis, and information. And this is many things inside. Try to get the nexus. So that is very important. And the workshop, try to get together the different opinion, different stakeholders different point of view, but, but with uh, the, best, uh, the best way to find the, the road or the way where, where we can find the solution in this place, in the area, in Atlantic plan, but can be also applying in other places, of course, if it's successful. But, and and it will be and, and seems, seems to be that it's successful. So. Thank you. Yeah.
Uh, just a question to Rarit, who uh, watched the Facebook live stream in parallel. Are there any other questions from this audience over there? Uh, yeah, indeed, we have a question uh, which is a little general, but uh, uh, interesting. Uh, what are the three main challenges uh, that you have faced, uh, encountered throughout the project? Uh, yeah, it'd be good if you can answer it briefly as well. Jorge. Well, it's no, we, 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 can, we, we can say the buzzer says the fonts. But it's not really only the fonts. And many things uh, to to get the the right things of research local and and to find to trying to find this consensus with different countries, multidisciplinary uh, backgrounds, and so so sometimes that that is the, that is one of one of the challenges that of this project. Yeah? Okay. From my point of view, maybe if I think of three, first of all is the lack of uh, data. The other part is the flux uh, of information, how we move among uh, different stakeholders. And uh, the other challenge was how to uh, make all the stakeholders sitting on a table and also listening thoroughly of options uh, before saying, no. Yeah, that is, is, is one, I think, the thing that made different this project. They, they, they have to try to, even in Mexico, they bought, bought, they bought it, places because I saw yes. the, the stakeholders with different, in, no interest, but no, no bad interest, but interest. I, no interest. Yeah. Due to the lack of time, we couldn't uh, go through both examples, but uh, for example, in Mexico, despite the number of uh, stakeholders were way uh, lower in number compared to Guatemala, uh, the conflict of interest was higher and therefore also the flux, uh, I mean, the movement of information uh, between the stakeholders was even lower. Yeah. Yeah, it's one of the challenges. <laughs> yeah, thank I you. Sorry, Serena, you want to say some final? No, I hope we replied to the question of yeah. Rashid. Thank you very much to you both and everyone who participated. Thanks for the insights uh, to the project. I think we are almost done with this event, but we would now come to the award ceremony of the local design competition for the new project, which is now following. So I just share my screen and give the floor again to Serena. Okay, thank you, Christina. So, well, uh, I couldn't find a better place where to uh, announce this uh, small uh, competition. And this competition deal with uh, def uh, designing of logo for our new uh, coming project, which is called Smart Water Domain. Next, please. Um, the smart water domain comes uh, into a play with other, uh, another international consortium, uh, and it's part of the IG Concert Japan for a specific call on smart water management for sustainable society. Um, the key objective or the main goal of this project is to develop a systematic framework that would facilitate the uptake of uh, water reuse uh, into different contexts, in this case related to uh, public-private uh, partnership and to define an assessment mechanism for company and or utilities that would uh, favor or uh, prove the concept that implementation in this regard is possible. Uh, next, please. Um, I would like to therefore uh, thank and uh, congratulate with the winner of uh, the one of the winner because today we have two equal plays. We couldn't decide which was the most uh, inter interesting uh, logo with Evin School. 
Evin Özgül is from Istanbul, Turkey, and she is a marketing associate and she holds a bachelor degrees in arts, culture management at the Istanbul Bilge University. Um, so maybe we can show her uh, the um, logo and um, the design and uh, the logo design of uh, Miss uh, Evin Old Schools is inspired by the natural colors of water in different forms and the circularity in water system. The logo clearly highlights a city image as a central theme, which is compatible with the efforts of the project to support the objective of SDG 11, Sustainable Cities and Community. The modern face of the logo design reflects the objective of enhancing a smart urban water reuse by maximizing the impact of digitalization in such a project. We would like to congratulate with uh, Evin and thank you for having participated to the logo a competition. Next one, please. And our next first place winner of this logo competition is Eduardo Martini. Eduardo Martini is Italian born in Siena and is a postdoc at the Institute of Environmental Physics University of Heidelberg here in Germany and is a guest scientist at the Helmholtz Center for Environmental Research in Leipzig, Germany. He holds a PhD degree in hydrology and at the, which was um, gained at the University of Freiburg in Germany. I would like to congratulate with uh, Mr. Eduardo Martini, which has designed a logo that merged some of the most and immediate, immediately perceivable keywords of our smart water domain project and is representing those keywords in a very simple but direct and original form. The logo feature the objective of promoting circular economy and define and uh, relates hints at components of the project. The society populated in the city, the concept of data and digitalization, and represents the uses of water for industrial and environmental application. The logo design has its value as we visualize a complex research project in a very simple manner and very successfully. Thank you, Eduardo, and congratulations for this award. Um, in this case, everyone. go ahead, please. We, we want to say some words from our awardee, and we have uh, Miss Evin, a school which couldn't uh, attend but she kindly sent us a small video. Good afternoon, everyone. First of all, I would like to thank you for the invitation to attend this event today and to the ceremony. And I'm sorry that I couldn't join you in the live session today. I am very happy that my design Design has been selected as one of the logos of the Smart Water Domain Project, and I would like to thank all of the organizers and the committee for this great honor. Uh, I hold a degree in Arts and Cultural Management, and I'm currently working in the field of brand management and marketing. So I've been always interested in digital design, and as, as a young citizen of Istanbul, Turkey, which is one of the biggest metropolis of the region, I am very much aware of the environmental problems that directly affecting our daily lives. So considering the 16 million population, which is continuously increasing, reducing our water footprint is indeed among the most vital issues for us. As I am working in a different professional field, the Logo Contest has been a great opportunity for me to integrate my work in the field of sustainable development. My logo is mainly inspired by the natural colors of different forms of water and the idea of circularity. I wanted to highlight the city image in my logo as the project focuses on water use for smart cities. I hope that the modern face of the logo will, ref will reflect the objectives of the project and I wish the smart water domain team much success with their project and I wish all of you a nice day and thank you very much again for this great honor. 
Thank you, Evin. And uh, as we have the honor to have a Dr. Eduardo Martini here with us, I would like to give the floor live to you. And first of all, congratulations. And we are looking forward to your words. Yeah, thank you. So hello, everyone. Uh, <laughs> Thanks for the for the very kind introduction. Uh, but first of all, thanks for uh, for organizing the, the logo contest. Um, so as a as a non uh, non professional illustrator, uh, as a as a scientist interested in, in water, was actually very nice to uh, to see this initiative. So thanks for that. Uh, and. Yeah, I also would like to congratulate with uh, Evin. I I have to say I really might I really like her logo. <laughs> <laughs> you were both excellent. <laughs> it's a very nice one. Um, yeah, you have said everything about uh, about my logo. You nicely introduced myself also uh, so I don't have much to to add I just wish uh, big such a success to uh, to this project and thanks again to Uno Flores and the project partners uh, for this Thank you. Thank you, Eduardo. And uh, for the both of you, you will be receiving the award, uh, which is a small monitoring uh, reward, but also our certificate as an award. And we are looking forward, maybe why not, to uh, build next uh, projects together. I really like you both uh, as a one as a scientist that really has understood also the concept of the uh, logo and also Evin, which has defined a very synthetic uh, smart water domain uh, uh, sign. So uh, we will be using both of them in our project. And thank you again for taking part of this competition. All the best for you. Thank you to everyone. And I think it's time to wrap up this session. And also congratulations again to Eduardo, to you here. And thanks for George and Serena for joining us at this event today. And also thanks to you as a participant attendees for joining us at this event live here. And if you have any other questions content related, you can reach out to Rorke or George and Serena directly. We just put the addresses again in the chat. And I just would like to share my screen again to highlight the next session. So as we mentioned, this is an event series um, and we will have next week researchers from University of Bonn and UNU EHS in Bonn uh, having part, uh, being part of this event and they will talk about their insights about uh, cooperation in research education. This will take place again the same time on Wednesday next week on the 11th of November. And yes, I think that's everything from our side. Thanks again for joining us and have a good afternoon or good morning wherever you're joining. Thank you. Hello. Bye, everyone. Bye, Bye. Goodbye, everyone, and thanks again. Wish you good luck with all your research. Thank you very much, Eduardo. Bye. It was a pleasure. Bye, man. Yeah.